I don't have time to exercise. I don't have time for myself. I don't have time to provide healthy foods for my kids. This is the Begin Within podcast, where we believe real, lasting health and fitness requires you to start inside before you work out. I'm your host, Nate Slegger, and I'm here to show you behind the scenes of fitness. You already know exercise is good for you, but what about all the other things in life that affect your fitness? If you're looking for extra motivation to get started or to make sure you keep going, this is the place for you. Produced by BeginWithin.fit Before we get into our episode, could you do me a huge favor? That will only take you a few seconds. Could you help me to get this show discovered by more people who could benefit from it? You're thinking, yes, I want to help, but how do I do it? (laughs) Here's how you do it. Please make sure that you are following the Begin Within podcast on whatever podcast listening platform that you are on right now, and also give it a rating. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please take 30 seconds to write a quick review about how much you love this show. If you've already done this, thank you so much. And if you're about to do it, (laughs) thank you as well. Now, let's get into our episode. My guest today is Dr. Orlina Carrick. She is the host of the Fit and Fabulous at 40 and Beyond podcast. At the end of last year, I promised you that we were going to have some episodes specifically for parents. And even if you don't have kids, I want to tell you right now, you will benefit from what Dr. Orlina has to share, because I know I did. And I'll tell you about that after the interview. Now, if you are a parent Let me just tell you this. Sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, I believe you have the toughest job that there is. Raising kids. I don't have kids of my own. If you've listened to this podcast for any length of time, you know Amanda and I don't have kids. But having been a kid and having lots of friends that are parents... I know for a fact I can say that parenting is the toughest job there is. And if you are a parent who is working on being healthier yourself and helping your kids, your family to be healthier, then your job is even tougher. But it is not impossible. There are people who are doing it, and I am determined to connect you with them this year on the podcast. So in amongst our regular episodes, the types of things that we love to focus on here, we are going to talk about parenting, how to put your own health, wellness in the place where it needs to be in order for you to make progress, and also where we can, how you can help your children to do the same. Here's a couple things that I want you to listen for as we dig into the interview with Dr. Orlina. First of all, we are going to talk about habits, systems, and routines. Kind of as a as a big bunch of things, but I want you to pay close attention when she talks about that and start thinking of ways that you can incorporate those concepts into your life to make things easier. And then secondly, we're going to talk about the importance of um, making sure that you don't, as a parent, link food to emotions. Why that's so important and how you can do it. And of course, the challenge of not doing it. We're going to talk about that. So those two things, listen for habit systems and routines, and then how, as a parent, you can help your children to keep food and emotions 
separate. Here's my interview with Dr. Orlina Carrick. I think there's several components. I think the first one is identity, like how we think of ourselves. So Mm. I think of myself as a healthy person. I I love being healthy. I enjoy being healthy. But, you know, it's been my identity for years, even being a doctor. So that's number one. I think having habit systems and routines in place so so that it's easy for you. It's not about being amazingly disciplined or superwoman or anything like that. It's just... Let me give you an example. Um, well, you know, I live in Spain. I, on Sunday, go to our fruit and vegetable market, which I love doing. It's super fun. I go and chat to all the people and I trundle back with like kilos of vegetables. But hey, what can I buy at the fruit and vegetable market? I can buy fruit and vegetables. I can't buy, well, they do sell candies, but you know, I buy the candies there. But it's a really different experience than going to your supermarket. You go to the supermarket and, you know, there's tempting muffins mm. and all of those things. Um, so yeah, it's systems, habits, routines, identity. Those are the the two main things. Okay. Yeah. I get what you're saying with the, with the grocery store, you're kind of choosing your own journey at the market versus at the store. We're kind of going and being like, Hey, what what do you want to sell me today? Put it in front of me and I'll throw it in the cart. (laughs) Yeah. So what you're doing is you're being intentional and saying, I'm putting myself in a position where I when my habit brain, that uh, that subconscious or that part of your subconscious brain is going to go, hey, yeah, isn't it great? I want to buy chocolate. There's no chocolate to buy. You, do you know what I mean? You're not mm-hmm. tempting yourself. You're making it easy for yourself to be healthy. So setting yourself up in a way that it is easy. It's not about, oh, my goodness, you know, I have to go and rattle through 50 different recipes and find a recipe. I just create food and we haven't got on to kids and picky eaters, but essentially I create food and my children either eat it. Sometimes they have an apple instead or they don't eat it. You know, that's a slightly different story, but it's not like I spent hours and hours, you know, worrying about what to cook and what not to do because I've just got it automated. My system is very simple. It's to look at what vegetables I've got and cook them. Um, <laughs> that's essentially it. But, you know, it boils down to how do we keep ourselves healthy? We just have these habit systems and routines. Yeah. So I've heard you say that a few times now, habits, systems, routines, I, it rolls off your tongue. Like you say it a lot. <laughs> um, what's the difference between those, those three? Yeah, is sure. there a question? Yeah, yeah, there is. There is. So a habit is a behavior that we have that's kind of subconscious that we do without thinking. So brushing your teeth is a really good example of, you know, you wake up in the morning, depending on your routine, But how many times have you left the house going, oh, my goodness, I've forgotten to brush my teeth. It just it never happens. So that's a really good example of a habit. And, you know, healthy habits. I sort of roll out of bed and do a seven minute workout. I'm in the habit of buying fruit and vegetables. I'm in the habit of going swimming and all of those, you know, loads of other healthy Mm -hmm. habits. So that's habits. Systems are things that we put in place. So, you know, I have to do laundry for four children and I have a system that I use for doing that, which is, you know, the kids have to leave the, their dirty clothes here, then I can take it upstairs. And then, we, do you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. that's the system that we have. And then, no, sorry, that's a routine. Let me think. I'm, I'm getting myself confused now. So that's the kind of routine you have. A system can be something like, for example, when my kids get into the car, they're going to argue over which chair they want to get into so to avoid that argument we have a system oh you know two of you go in the back two of you go and they have a system I'm like you guys sort out the system I'm not interested in the system but you know they know okay it's my turn to go in the front it's my turn to go in the back okay so that's a system and you know thinking about the routine piece the routine piece as well is for example thinking about our dishwasher we have a dishwasher and we put it on after dinner, like basically come rain or shine, because it's easier to do that. If I, if we fall out of that routine, then sometimes I find myself going, oh my goodness, the dishwasher needs to be put on after breakfast. Now I know this sounds like a ridiculous thing to be talking about, but you put the dishwasher on after breakfast and then I end up having to wash up the knives and forks at dinner time because I don't have enough knives and forks to be able to do that. So it seems really ridiculous, like when do you put your dishwasher on? But these small things make a big difference to 
your life, yeah. if you can make your life run smoothly so that you don't have to get in and go, oh my goodness, what am I going to have for dinner? Oh my goodness, now I have to wash up the knives and forks. And, you know, as a busy mum, you need these things to work really well because otherwise, like it's like a house of cards and everything mm -hmm. just falls down. And that's when you find yourself going, I don't have time to exercise. I don't have time for myself. I don't have time to provide healthy foods for my kids and all of these excuses that we hear. And the answer is, it's not about time. It's not about anything else. We're all created, you know, we all have 24 hours. It's just, hey, I don't have to think about it. And I set my life up with these systems, habits and routines so that it's, it's easy. And everybody uh, knows, everybody in the family knows what's going on. Yeah, no, I like that. And I, I was laughing as you were talking about the dishwasher because I mean, there's just two of us but the we're the we're the opposite of you because we're always like it's not full yet don't run it like how oh you can run it after we eat dinner because those dishes will fill up the gaps and then we'll be good and then the next two days later it's like just what you said now it's after breakfast and we're like oh it's full already or is it dirty is it clean um you just saved me a whole <laughs> lot of thought we just run it after it's dinner so every true. night no matter what yeah but this is it's this, <laughs> these things like our brains only have the capacity to be thinking about a certain number of things. And we want to use our brains to do the amazing things we can in life. You know, so you coaching your, your clients or creating amazing content, you want your brain to be thinking about that. You don't want to be using your golden brain juice to be thinking about, hey, when should I put the dishwasher on? Like, mm -hmm. you know, I know we want to be environmentally friendly, but I don't think that is the solution to the world's problems. <laughs> yeah, no, it reminds me... Um... David Allen, uh, he's a organizational guy. He says, uh, your brain is for, um, having ideas, not, not saving them or not storing them. And we, I, as you're saying that I'm, I'm thinking of that. Yeah. Like we're trying to like, in our, there's a piece of our brain that is now like, it knows how full the dishwasher is and yeah. probably when it needs to like, just release it, open it up yeah. for something more important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it's the same. So you look at busy mums and, you know, when I talk to people, they'll be thinking about, oh, you know, what do I cook for dinner? All of those like small things that, you know, we do have to juggle those in our brain because like we kind of have to hold our kids accountable for a bit. Like, you know, we have to make sure our kids do all of these things because until the kids can do them themselves. So there is a certain amount of, okay, a mother's brain and father's brain is spent sort of like, mopping up all of that stuff but we want to minimize that stuff mm -hmm. as much as possible because it's not energy well spent if we can what i call give it to the habit fairy the habit fairy just takes all of that noise out of your brain and she she deals with it and the nice. habit fairy really is the systems the habits and the routines it's all three of those awesome i love it um picky eaters i know you touched oh. on that a little bit can we talk about that i do hear parents I mean, they say that like now, what am I supposed to do? Make, make two meals. Um, my kids aren't going to eat this. What, what advice would you give there? Uh, so I would say, first of all, picky eating is a real thing. It's not the parents fault. It's a super big topic. There is a lot that goes into it. Um, one thing I would say is the, the one mistake that parents make is pushing their kids to eat. And this does mm. depend on your child because picky eating is like a spectrum. So there are some children, I've got a child, my nine-year-old, he's the youngest, he's twins, he's a twin. And he is super picky, he's a very anxious child. And a, a lot of picky eaters are anxious child, children. Oh my goodness, you know, he has problems at the age of nine, brushing his teeth. It's something that he finds very, very difficult. He doesn't like the taste of, I've tried every single toothpaste. He doesn't like any of them, even the ones that apparently don't have any taste. As opposed to some children who, um, you know, oh, they don't like one or two things. And, you know, it, it kind of depends. So it is about knowing your children because his twin is what I call a reasonably adventurous eater. But she will, obviously, when everyone else is going, oh, I don't like this, I don't like this. She'll join in and go, oh, I don't like this either. And it's like, okay. yeah, you do really. Can you just eat some vegetables and stop fussing, please? So there is, there is a sort of like balance between knowing your children and knowing that if you start pushing your kids and you enter into that like you know loggerheads you're not going to win that argument so step back and and don't do that and 
you know, even getting children to try stuff that they don't want to, again, it can still lead to that huge weight conflict. Okay. To reassure parents, what my big mission in life is, is to reassure people that if you are a healthy person and you lead a healthy life and you are, your children grow up in a healthy family, that is the best way that you can teach children healthy eating and healthy living. It's just by demonstrating it. And it's one of the reasons why I really stopped focusing on picky eating and really turned to work with mothers because essentially the the problem was with them and you know they would be going I want my kids to eat healthily but they weren't eating healthily and that's Mm. a really difficult place to be in yeah Yeah. so I think those are the things and if we're thinking about healthy eating for children as well you know we want to think about vegetables we want to think about moderation and we want to think about emotional eating and emotional eating is a big thing for everybody but what we don't want to do as parents is make that link between emotions and food and the way we do that or the way we avoid doing that is by not not using food as a tool to manipulate our children's behavior so Mm. and it's really easy to do like I remember when I had my first child and he was I don't know he must have been about a year old or so or perhaps even younger Okay. And no, he must have been a year old because I remember him having a biscuit, a cookie, and the cookie would have had sugar in it. And he didn't have any sugar before the age of one. But, you know, he didn't want to get in the car seat. And because the kids have to be strapped in and they don't like being strapped in. And so, you know, they're like this octopus. And you're like, can you just stay still? Can we just get you in? (laughs) You know, they obviously don't understand. But, you know, we're on an agenda and we want to get them to nursery or work or whatever it is. And I quickly discovered that if I handed him a biscuit, oh my goodness, all focus on the biscuit, so easy. Suddenly he's really amenable and I can put Mm -hmm. the the, the car seat on. But what I'm doing is basically rewarding him or bribing him with a cookie. And that is making a link between behavior and food. So, you know, other things are, if you're good, you can have an ice cream or if you're bad, you can't have ice cream. That is making a link between emotions and food. And we really want to avoid that. You know, we do, obviously, we celebrate life with food, but this, it should be, hey, we're going to go and have an ice cream because we enjoy ice cream and ice cream tastes good. Isn't ice cream great? It's not like you never have to eat ice cream. But you don't eat ice cream as a reward. You eat it because ice cream's nice. Okay. What, I'm curious, I mean, it, it is so easy, right? I mean, to pacify uh, a child with, a food is it how how does it work when you take that out like what what i guess ideally what would that how would that situation play out oh and yeah, i'm not trying to challenge you i'm just curious you no know, no no it's a very good question <laughs> it's a very good question and i think it's one that we can ask ourselves as adults like what happens okay so i'm not going to do emotional eating what am i going to do and the answer is we're going to look at emotions and we're mm. going to work our way through the emotions so when you've got a toddler toddlers have tantrums it doesn't really matter if you bribe them with food they are going to have tantrums anyhow so they may have a few less if you bribe them with food but the bottom line is they're still going to have tantrums and as a parent you need to learn how to manage your children's emotions and what you really need to do is learn to manage your own emotions and that is a really big big piece like it's difficult it's not easy it's very easy to talk about but when you're there with a screaming child you know you reflect you mirror we have these things called mirror emotions but Mm -hmm. we begin to feel stressed and emotionally connected to our child and we take on that emotion and that's not how we want to parent and I think that is essentially in a nutshell a parent's job for 18 years is to help that help your children Well, number one, you need to look to your own emotional wellness. But number two, then your job is to help your children with their emotional wellness. And they're kids. You know, they're going to act like kids. Um, As I say, it's not easy, but, and you're not going to get it perfectly all the time. I promise you, you're not going to get it perfectly, but that's what we're striving for. Yeah. Wow. That is, that's, that's huge. I can tell that um, that's going to be really helpful for a lot of people. I feel like it's helpful for me. I mean, even when I think in terms of our, what's your job? It's manage your emotions. 
interact successfully with other people. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was a wake up call for me. Like nobody told me that before I had kids. Like, you know, I just, I was clearly the perfect girl when I was <laughs> growing up. <laughs> Such a good girl. I never gave my parents any. It was the grief. same way. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I don't know. Kids seem to have changed these days. I'm sure I wasn't actually. I'm sure it just felt like I was at the time. But I, yeah, my, all of my kids have huge emotions. In fact, I do actually think that I was talking to a parenting coach and she says, out of four kids, you don't normally expect all four of them to have big emotions. There's normally like one per family. Um, so I, yeah, I don't know what happened there. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it doesn't really matter whether they have big emotions or not everybody has emotions. That's kind of what happens. But for me, my personal story was, you know, when I moved to Spain and I say I accidentally gave up my career, I moved thinking, oh, I'm going to be a doctor and work as a doctor. It's a long story, but that didn't happen. But, you know, I look back and saw myself in this sort of almost emotional pit of coping with four young kids who were under the age of five, which is hard work, stressful, tiring. Plus, you've got all this screaming and shouting going on and seeing myself and going, this isn't what I want with my life. This is this it wasn't what the 18 year old Olina thought that would happen in her 30s and 40s. I could see myself being stressed and grumpy and thinking, this isn't the person I want to be. This isn't how I want my life to be. And out of that, I really got to understand about emotions. And I think they are just absolutely fascinating. Yeah. And I think there was this idea I had that, oh, emotions drop from the sky. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, you know, I'm feeling stressed and tired today. Oh, I happen to be happy because something happened to me. And I didn't realize that there was... Like we can't 100% control our emotions, but there is so much that we can do to influence our emotions. And who knew? I didn't know yeah. back then, but now I know. And now that's the work that is the like amazingly interesting work, both for kids and adults. But obviously in order to teach your kids, you have to learn it yourself first. Yeah, I love it. And I know this, this, um, this is a big focus that you have is around emotional eating what what's the best way for people to follow your your work and the the content that you're you're putting out around emotional eating? Well, thank you, thank you for asking. So, well, number one, my podcast um, is Fit and Fabulous at Forty and Beyond, and I think the other thing really is my Facebook group. So, I have a fo- Facebook group called it's called Eliminate Emotional Eating. Okay, and I'm going to be really focusing on emotional eating this year, because I really feel that it is the key to healthy eating. Like so many people say to me, oh, I eat healthily, but dot, 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 I eat lots of vegetables, dot, 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 but I just can't stop eating candy or I can't stop eating this. And, you know, working with people who want to lose weight, you know, it's really easy, eat vegetables, do some exercise. It's kind of easy on one level, isn't it? But yeah. the thing that really trips people up is that emotional eating piece. Yeah, and I think sure. that's, yeah, that's why I want to, and I'm going to be doing free workshops this year as well. So every month I will do a free workshop where I go over the sort of, you know, what is emotional eating? What are emotions? How do we solve this issue? Awesome. Cool. I, I will put the links to the podcast and to the group, if it's okay with you, into the, you. the notes for the show. Um, one final question for you. I am curious if, if you can think of a parent that may be listening and they're thinking, I've got to, I'm, I'm listening to this because I want to do a better job of having a healthy environment at home, taking care of myself and helping my children. What would be a piece of advice that you would give to them to help them to get started? I would say, hooray, do it, do it. Like, I think so many people feel when you're standing there, scared it's like the unknown and it feels scary it feels overwhelming it feels different um and one piece of advice i would say is get help like seriously get help like you know obviously me or you we're both amazing coaches but it doesn't have to be us it can be somebody else and i think so many people have this idea that oh my goodness i shouldn't need a coach to teach me how to eat healthily and i just think it's kind of ridiculous you know we send our kids to school to learn maths we don't Mm -hmm. expect them to go to school and sit with a book and figure it out themselves do we we expect the teacher to tell them what to do but why is it when it's something like 
so important in our lives. Why do we have this idea of, oh, I don't need people to help me do this. And I think we do need people. And it's not a weakness. It's a strength to go get some help, get somebody who's really going to help me do this. And, you know, when you're looking for that help, chat to that person, feel comfortable with that person. You need to trust that person. And, you know, not all, you have to find someone who you think, yeah, this person can really help me get to where my goals are. Right. Yeah. Great. Dr. Orlina, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. It's always so awesome to talk to Dr. Orlina. I am so appreciative that she came on the show again and was willing to talk and just be real about the challenges of parenting and also working on being healthier and helping your kids to do the same. I really hope that this was beneficial for you. I'd love to get your feedback on it. Of course, like you heard in the intro, you can give feedback by rating and reviewing the podcast where you listen to podcasts. I would also love to hear from you personally. You can connect with me on Instagram or shoot me an email, nate at beginwithin.fit. As also mentioned, I'm going to have links for you in the show notes so that you can get in touch with Dr. Orlina, both by listening to her podcast, Fit and Fabulous at 40 and Beyond, and also so that you can check out her Facebook group, the one that she mentioned. And uh, I know that, that you'll love it. I follow her work and absolutely enjoy her sense of humor and the things that she share, shares about parenting and helping her kids to, to be healthier too. So keep up the good work, Dr. Orlina. Now let's review those two things that I asked you to listen for. First of all, habits, systems, routines. Here's what I want you to start thinking about in those terms. Before we get, you know, really uh, hardcore into the definition of, of those three different things, I want you to think about it in this way, kind of with this perspective. Think about ways that you can make less decisions in the moment in your life. Think about ways to make less decisions. Now, I say in the moment because I understand you have to make the decision at some point. But we all know that there are definitely times in our life when we are we're in decision-making mode and we're confident we're making the right decision. And then there are other times when we're kind of in the moment and if we have a decision to make, we might not make the best one, right? Like um, when you're hungry late at night, for example. So we all agree, right? That sometimes we are more likely to make good decisions than other times or decisions that'll help us to be healthier than other times. I want to be careful about my labeling, good and bad. Um, but let's talk about how to make life easier. If you're a parent, I already told you, you have the toughest job there is. I know that. You already know that. You didn't come here to hear that. But what you came here for is to find out how to make life easier. And this little piece from Dr. Orlina's interview stuck with me. It's something that can benefit us all, parents or not. Make less decisions in the moment. Plan ahead or make the decisions ahead of time. And here, here's what I mean. If you're the type of person, and I am sometimes, I'm going to admit that some days I'm kind of like, oh, you know what? Normally I work out on Wednesdays or Thursdays. Like today's a Thursday, right? Normally I work out on Thursdays. Ah, oh, but today I'm just you know what, I could, I could just work out tomorrow. Or maybe it's just right now this morning, I'm kind of busy, I'll just work out later in the day. You know, as well as I do that, <laughs> if you're saying that to yourself, it's very likely that you are not going to get that workout done. And maybe the next day the same and the same. So what do we do? We schedule a time to do our workout on Thursday morning. It's in the calendar. It's there. I mean, let's just say it's 7 a.m. workout time. We know at 7 a.m. the decision's already been made. 
Let's go do the work. I don't have to decide, am I going to work out today or not? If you're stuck in there trying to decide in the moment, every time you have an opportunity to work out or every single day, "Ah, should I work out today or not? Chances are you're not going to be successful until you decide, you make a decision and you stick to it. So just go do it. Then it's just about taking the action. The decision's already been made when we put it in our calendar. And the same goes for all the little decisions, you know, using working out as an example that go around the workout. What should I wear? What should I do for my workout? What exercises should I do? What should my warm up be like? Where am I going to work out? How long am I going to work out for? All those things we can decide ahead. And that's just one example, right? Working out. Dr. Orlina blew my mind. She talked about the dishwasher. Like I mentioned, there's only two of us. It's just me and Amanda. But man, are those dishes clean? Are they dirty? Did you run it? Did you not run it? What's what's up? Oh, there's a whole counter full of dishes, but there's only room for two more coffee mugs. And then we have to run it. And you know what? I love her idea. And I've been working on it since I talked to her a couple of weeks ago when we did the interview to just do the dishes every single night, run it. I don't care how full it is. We're going to do it every morning. I go downstairs. The kitchen's pretty clean because all the dishes are in there. And I know for a fact, they're all clean. I know that before dinner the next night, we have to empty them at some point. It just, it works. You get the idea. Less decisions. Let's work on it, all of us. And then finally, working on avoiding the link between food and emotions. And again, Dr. Orlina spoke to parents, but this goes for all of us, right? And the skill or the the habit that we can all get into for ourselves or for our kids is why the food? Why the food right now? Is it because it's time to eat? Is it because we're hungry? Or is it because of something else? And most of the time, if it's because of something else, there's an emotional reason behind it. And the first step for all of us is just to start to become more aware of our reason for eating. I'm not saying you you shouldn't eat for emotional reasons or to celebrate or whatever. That's for you to decide. But just be aware that that's a choice that you're making. That's all I would say to get started with it. But to start taking a look at ourselves and our families. Why? Why are we eating right now? Because there could be a danger, right? There could be a powerful link that's being established that might end up leading us toward being less healthy down the line. And we're here because we have goals, we have fitness goals, we have health goals. And one of the key components of living a healthier life is being aware of the effect that food's having on us and the effect that our emotions are having on the food that we're eating. I hope this was really enlightening for you. You can tell that I, I love the interview and I'm, I'm able to take a lot away from it. I hope you were too. Thank you so much once again for being here with me on the Begin Within podcast. If you are tired of feeling frustrated and disappointed with fitness and you're ready to get on the path to being the healthy person you want to be, Just go to beginwithin.fit and click the Join Our Challenge button. We can't wait to support you in your fitness journey and help you to get the results you deserve.